Oh yeah, she's that country girl who overcame the stigma that southern women are barefoot, backwoods, and backwards. Now she's an articulate voice for conservative values and wisdom in America. Sitting on her front porch sharing common sense, here's Marnie. Hi, welcome back to my front porch where we talk about common sense principles in America. Today I want to make a case for morality. A case for morality. I believe that freedom of religion is actually a check, part of the checks and balances upon the government and upon the people themselves. When we are moral, we take personal responsibility for our, our own actions. The thing of it is, is that freedom, a free society, has some challenges built within it. A free society gives us all kinds of freedom to create and to prosper and to innovate and all of the technology and the developments that we have, we can see have been born out of a free enterprise system, a free uh, economy that where supply and demand creates more innovation, creates more ideas and things that go around and make the world a better place. In these free societies, we have a lot of good, but the challenge is that you can't control someone else in a free society. Uh, you can, but not without impinging on your own rights and the very process. See, a free society allows you to think, to believe, to say the things you want to say, to basically do what you want to do within a framework. And the framework is what the founders called uh, life, liberty, and property. As long as life, liberty, and property are protected, you can have a free society. And that means, you know, no killing people, no stealing their stuff, no enslaving one person to another. As long as those things are in place, then you can have a free society. And a free society that's set upon checks and balances actually can can put up with a few violations of these this rule but it's, at some point if you completely dismiss that framework you're going to have anarchy at that point and which is going to invite in an oppressive government with this freedom of choice that means i if i want to believe what i want to believe if i want to spend my days the way i want to spend my days with within the framework of not violating anyone's inalienable rights in the process, then I need to allow you the same. And that means you may not believe what I believe. You may believe things that are offensive to me. You may act in certain ways that I don't agree with. I wouldn't live my life that way and vice versa. I may do things that offend you or that you wouldn't want to live your life that way. But in a free society, you have that ability. So in a free society, you're free to choose freedom of choice within the constraints of life, liberty, and property being protected. But you're not free to choose the consequences of your choices. See, if you think of freedom as like a, a stick, you pick up this stick. When you pick up the choice, you pick up the consequence on the other side of the stick. That's how intricately related choice and accountability, choice outcome, consequences are that tied together. When we make a choice, we are accountable for the consequence of that choice. And as we learn and we grow, if we're observant, if we're someone who's paying attention, we will see that negative things bring negative consequences. And negative thoughts bring negative realities. I was reading about the correlation the other day between pornography and abuse. Pornography and rape pornography and other sexual uh, related crimes and there is a direct correlation. Now some people will say oh no no there's not but there actually is documented evidence and why are we surprised by that? I don't understand why we're really surprised by that because even in self-help circles we talk about what you think about you bring about. What you think about you bring about. The mind cannot tell the difference between a real and imagined event. The more you visualize things the more you bring them into your reality. So you've got a, a massive portion of the population who is looking at filth and then they are acting on it and it's turning into these types of crimes and things like that. Like a drug, it's something that needs something harder and harder and harder and you've, you've got this correlation here. 
Now, people don't want to admit that, they don't want to look at that, but why they're not seeing the correlation between what you think about and what you bring about is beyond me. When the same goes for negative things. See, so garbage in, garbage out. All right, so we see this correlation here, and we might say, well, uh, we need to make pornography illegal. And, and hey, you know, that may be true. I'm not gonna pro or con that right here. But if we want to make that illegal, it would need to be done at the state level and the community level by the voice of the people or the states. So it's, it's not a constitutional really thing that we need to be talking about. Uh, constitutionally, it's left to the people or the states. The people or states can make laws about whatever they want. Let's say that they do make it illegal. Well, that's not gonna stop somebody from texting, from creating their own porn, because like today, you've got children sending naked pictures of themselves to their boyfriends or their girlfriends or the person they want to be their boyfriend or their girlfriend. You've got these, this pornography created in mass by individuals. So the, stopping that is probably next to impossible. It's sort of like making drugs illegal hasn't really stopped the drug problem. If we were to make guns illegal, that wouldn't stop the gun problem because only the law-abiding citizens would turn in their guns and the criminals would keep their guns. So the root problem is not the thing. The very, if you want to get re really, really, really down to the root of it, it's morality. It's personal responsibility, personal self-mastery uh, to have certain bounds on your behavior and knowing that if you cross any bounds in excess, you're gonna have a problem. If I go crazy with ice cream, I'm going to be a blimp. I mean, that's just a fact of it. I'm gonna be a diabetic if I just chow on sugar all the time. I have consequences to that. So learning some self-mastery is the key. Uh, personal responsibility for your actions and realizing that if I make this choice, I'm going to reap consequences. I may not re reap it the very first time, but if I keep doing it over and over again, I'm going to reap a consequence. Now, the best way that I know of to create self-mastery, to create personal responsibility, is through a religious practice, a spiritual practice, something that keeps you centered and grounded and not moving to excess in any direction. That is best done by what the founders gave us as part of the checks and balances in the system, the freedom of religion. A belief in God creates morality. And it's not because of outer coercion. Nobody forces anyone in any religion to live that religion. Now, there may be some, um, you know, the, the Amish have their shunning or whatever like that. There may be some, oh, you're not fitting in anymore. There may be excommunication in some churches, but even those, most of them don't say you can't come in the building. You could still come in and, and be there and worship them when, with them. Nobody is making you live a religion. It's a choice. When it comes down to it, it's a choice. And it's a choice that if done um, through a conversion process by God changing you, then it's something you want to do that you just naturally do, that God's grace allows you to have more self-mastery, more self-government. And when you govern yourself, you don't need someone to enforce laws on you. I mean, I, mean, I don't go out worrying every day if I'm gonna be arrested for stealing or if I'm gonna get arrested for carrying cocaine in my car, or I don't have all these worries. I'm not worried about any of that because I don't wanna do any of that stuff. I have no desire to do it. And so I'm not going around worried about a government oppressive force or a law enforcement coming in and doing that to me. I live in a free country and I choose to live my life in self-mastery and that solves a lot of problems. That gives me a lot of freedom. I don't waste my bandwidth worrying about if I'm gonna get arrested for something because I'm not doing anything to get arrested for. I'm governing myself. There's a quote by Ezra Taft Benson. He's a former Secretary of Agriculture under Eisenhower, and he wrote, the Lord works from the inside out. Inside out. The world works from the outside in. The world would take people out of the slums. Christ takes the slums out of the people, and then they take themselves out of the slums. Christ changes men who then change their environment. The world would shape human behavior, but Christ can change human nature. So the real key to self-mastery and 
freedom in our country comes down to this belief in God, this allowing of Christ to change us from the inside out so that we don't have no desire to do something that is going to break a law or harm someone else or go to such excess that we're out of balance and now we're wanting to act in ways that are going to harm others and infringe upon their life, liberty, or property. Just like with the porn thing, enforcing people not to do that is next to impossible. But if you change them from the inside out where they have no desire and that's repulsive to them, they have no desire to look at that that offends their spirit, then they're not going to be led down this path to then go and abuse someone or you know, do child porn or all, all these offensive things that are infringing, infringing upon the life, liberty, and property of other people. We have to have a grassroots moral revival, if you will, <laughs> back to God because God can change the human nature, which will change us so that we self-master. We don't need government to tell us what to do. We're not going to go out with a gun and shoot up our community because we have mastery. We have no desire to do that. It's not like we're, oh, I can't do that. I got to hold myself back. It's like you don't want to do it. It's not something you want to do. That's what has to happen to save our society. All the laws are band-aids and they don't fix the root problem that we have abandoned God and we have not allowed him to work in us to bring us into a place of self-mastery. So that's something to think about today. Y'all take care. God bless. Have a wonderful day.